Hi everyone, it's Nat here. I am finally on to do my room tour. I have tried this a few times with a few different devices uh, with not too much luck. So I've pinched my son's phone and we will give it a go. So I'm over by the door at the moment and I thought I would give you a look at my desk setup. So what you see in front of you are three desks. They're from Ikea. They're Malm desks. So that's M-A-L-M. So I did end up buying myself two, one for crafting and one as an office desk. And then my daughter bought herself one and when she moved out she left it here. So I ended up with three of them in the house. So when I moved into this room I moved them all in here. I did actually move a fourth desk in here but it was a little bit too pokey so I ended up moving that one out. So I'll try and do a bit of a pan. I'll go slow. I'm not very used to doing this. So I've opened the curtains a bit just to let some natural light in, but I usually don't have them open because I live on a bit of a busy road and we have a lot of school kids and buses that go past. So the furniture you see is mostly old stuff that I've had for a while. It's nearly all flat pack that I've put together. Um, or else it's from op shops, a marketplace or Ikea. I've only been in this place about five years and it's very white, this house is, which was a bit of a shock when I moved in. But I decided to keep it that way. <laughs> so, so there's the door. If you move around this way, there is a calyx unit there. Uh, this was the master bedroom which I have sacrificed, you know, priorities and all that. So there is an inbuilt wardrobe there. That's where I craft my son's old um, gaming chair. And then some wire racks over there. And then back to the windows. So we're going to start over by the windows. I've got the two big cupboards. These I got from a hardware store, Mitre 10, about 20 odd years ago as pantry cupboards for my old house. So they now are in my craft room. And on top of these I have these tubs and I have my craft feathers. I have some crepe paper for dyeing papers. I have fake flowers and I have like fabric leaves and more fake flowers, that sort of thing. And then I have a guillotine and paper cutter from Aldi there. So then in these cupboards, in this first one, this is sort of just a junk cupboard with a whole lot of random bits and pieces. So in this first one I have some just rolls of mesh. I have some of these bags, organza bags, that I like to put in journals sometimes. I have a tub that's full of just random stuff. There's unicorn patty pans and unicorn bits and pieces. I've got some... I think it's raffia up in here. I've got some fun foam, just random stuff like that. Down a bit I have a tub full of paper ribbon. I was going to get rid of that to give me more room because I don't know what I'd use it for. I don't get it on purpose, it just comes with other random craft bits in the op shop. So, um, But I might find a use for it and I'm a hoarder. Down in the next Level, I have hat elastic and buttons and buckles. So they're belt buckles and that that I can use for closures. And they're buttons that you can make your own, like cover with material and that sort of thing. Right, down below, I have permagana. I think that's how you say it. Pergam. Yeah, perm. I can never say that. Perg. Pergamana, yeah, I think that was right. <laughs> um, and some paper making kits and that sort of thing. And I have quilling paper and some paper cutting shapes. Uh, down the bottom, is that the bottom? No, not quite. I have all the silicon. I keep all the little silicon packets that come in my clothes and that just to put in things that I'm storing. I have some candles, I have some liner and liner cutting for stamp making. 
I have some of my die storage magnet sheets and some of my little scrapbooking album inserts and that sort of thing. Then right down the bottom I have some of the wooden storage things that you get your Kaiser Craft uh, chipboard pieces out of and that because I might want to make something with them one day and other wooden bits and pieces that I might want to decorate. I think in that tin there are some tea candles. Um, yeah, just all sorts of rubbish in that one. In the next cupboard, it's like a mixed media cupboard. So I have these trays at the back, which my dad gave me years ago. They're great trays to use as palettes for paints and different mediums to mix them in. So I have different palettes. I have spray bottles. Uh, jars, just things for mixing paints. I have my excess paint brushes and big brushes, just things like that. Next one down, I have some acrylic paints and watercolour paints. I have clay tools, I have air dry clay, I have glitter glue. Um, I think there's some pearl paints at the back there. I'll go down one more. This is my excess glue. I found a lot of glue in sort of bulk lots in the op shops. So they're so cheap that I just grabbed them. I think I've got some brushes there too. And some spray sealers. Uh, down in this one. Just move my hand, that's better. Uh, I have fabric paints and tie-dye stuff. That sort of thing. And right down the bottom I have a tub full of post paint, so it's really easy for me to pull out and use. Uh, that plastic thing at the front is um, 3D printed from Linda at Gems Papercraft. It's a glue gun holder. And I have my glue guns in that little plastic tub up the top there. And underneath them I have some hole punches. So that is those two tall cupboards that stand side by side near the wall. So next to them I have this sort of bookcase thing and on top of that, well right up the top of the wall, I have this picture and I have that picture of the owl and they are prints of artworks that were done by the lovely Susanna Easdale from Vintage Blend Studios. Now I think she gave me one when I went to her retreat and then I also bought one. They're absolutely beautiful. Now up there is that teddy bear, now that's Maud. Now she was made by um, Pam at um, Just Add Lace. So she is a pin holder. You can see there's some beautiful big hat pins in there that Pam also made. I love Maud, she's gorgeous. So I just have this um, bucket there to hold something. Now there is this container with all these drawers. I did get that from Spotlight, I'm pretty sure. I used a 40% off voucher to grab that one day. And that stores all my coloured threads, so it's really cool to be able to sort them into the colours in the drawers. And you can wiggle the drawers out and take them over to the desk if you want to use them, which is really handy. And then I've got my tape measures, my vintage sewing tapes there. And then on the other side, I have this container, which is scissors. I once got a sewing box from the op shop that was full of scissors. So I have a sewing kit here. So that's just got all my needles, pins, um, measuring tape, all that that I use generally for sewing. And there's a glass jar there that I picked up. I think that was full of buttons or something. It's empty, so I can put something in that in the future. Now down on the next shelf we have border making um, kit. I did a big haul that you might have seen um, where I got a whole lot of creative memories things. Um, so you'll see a lot of those probably as I go around. So there's a lot of dies that I got out of that haul just here. And then there's some um, packs of recipe cards as well. Down a bit further, I have my embossing folders. Now those containers are handy containers and they are from Bunnings. And they're great for storage. I've got a whole heap of those. 
So yeah, I've got one of them that has all my embossing folders and then another one next to it that has more of my dies. And then there's some more dies in that Sizzix container next to that. And then right down the bottom, I have more containers. They're like your fridge bins that you can pick up from Kmart and that. And I have my acrylic paints and folk art acrylics, that sort of thing down there. So I love having them in these containers because I can just grab the container I want and pull it up and put it on the desk to use. So while I am sitting at the desk, I will take advantage and have a bit more rest. I have a rubbish bin down here for all my sewing scraps. Um, so this is my sewing desk. So I have this old Janome sewing machine here that I use, which works really well for sewing paper. Now I have this stack of tubs here that just live there. <laughs> you can see how that top one is sitting on top of the others. You can stack them up like that and I think that's going to be handy if I'm doing a big project that has lots of different materials. I'll be able to sort the scraps out like that and it just keeps them off my sewing desk. So that's why I keep them there. I have this thread sorter which I find a bit useless. The idea was I was hoping to be able to put the threads on there and then the bobbins on top but the bobbin hardly fits on there and it always gets knocked off. So I think I'll try and sort something better out for that. So there's quite a bit of room on this desk which is wonderful but what I love about having the three desks is if I have friends come over the craft as well then I can fit three people in here very easily to craft with me. So, and then I've got a power board there. It's a lot easier to plug and unplug things having the power board up on the desk like that. So, I'll move along and show you this while we're on the desk. Now, I've just got it covered over. That's my big shot and some of my most used dies, which I have sorted into these packets. And it's in one of those handy containers again. This is quite heavy, as is the big shot. Got sick of picking it up and down every time I wanted to use it, so I thought it can just live on the desk. And that way, when I'm not sewing, I can use this area as a cutting area for my big shot. Okay, now, of course, we utilise the space under the desks, which I will scoot over and show you. So I have two massive tubs there. Uh, the one on the bottom, I think, is doilies. The one on the top is linens. And then I've got, you can see, two smaller tubs and they are smaller doilies and handkerchiefs, that sort of thing. So, yeah, <laughs> they're all under there. So next I will show you what is on top of my lace storage tool boy here. Uh, we'll scoot up. So that's where the owl picture is that I show you, showed you before. So I have this um, yeah, doll. <laughs> so I made her when I was about 20 and I can't, I'm not good at sewing or anything. So I'm quite proud that she held together and I love her clothes and that. So I've kept her. But of course I had young kids who got hold of her and tried to do a face on her, which I did try and wash off. <laughs> so she has this real like muddy face. So I might do something about that one day but I love her so she sits up there then I have this coffee mug which was given to me by Pam at Just Add Lace and there's a lot of Pam stuff here that I'll be showing you um, and it says nah and then it says paper possibilities crazy crafters which was was the name of my Facebook group absolutely love it and I don't want to use it in case I wash the um, letters off so it just sits there for now it's a beautiful card from Pam that's a beautiful book that Pam made me. Absolutely love it. She does the most beautiful work. Uh, that little mini journal, journal was gifted to me by uh, Wendy from Creating with Wendy. Now, this is my button storage shelf. So I've got some buttons there and some bling. There's a journal there that I found at the op shop. So it's just there for inspiration. So you can see I've got some jars of buttons um, and some embellishments that I found at the secondhand store. So yeah, that's where I store my buttons. Now on the side, you'll see these beautiful lacy hangings. Now they were given to me by the lovely Pam too. I was going to put them all around the house, but I love having them together here so I can look at them. I love that Victorian one down the bottom with some of the hat pins in it. And now on the other side, yes, there's more. <laughs> so beautiful. 
If we go down a bit, you'll see there are my metal buttons. And yes, there's another one of Pam's beautiful ACDs. And um, in that uh, tin, I have more buttons, like my clear ones and that. And there's more buttons here, more specialty buttons in that container, which I showed if you if you want a closer look, you can look at how I organise my buttons and that. I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago. And also in this tea container are more as well. Sorry about the shadows, it's getting to that time of the day. So yeah. Now in the tall boy, that is my lace organisation, which I also showed a week or so ago. So in here I have Pam's clutches, which are full of applique. And then we start with my laces, which are rolled onto scraps of cardboard. And then I use a pin or some rubber bands to secure them. So we'll just have a quick flick through this since I already showed it recently. And then in the bottom I've got some bolts. Okay, so now I'll take the opportunity to sit down at my second desk here. So there's the sewing desk and the cupboards and that that we've just looked at. And then we've got this desk here. Now that's the back of my subwoofer speakers. Um, I have a laptop here but the speakers on it are rubbish. So I plug this subwoofer in so I can hear everyone on their YouTubes and I can watch Netflix and that in here. I have the back of this desk, which was going to be mixed media desk. It was one of the kids' desks, and it's a bit scratched and messy. So I put some um, of your contact on here, just because I was going to use it as mixed media and that to protect it. But I actually find it handy for grabbing tubs from my Calyx unit. And I bring them over here, like stamps and dies and that, and sort them out and paper and everything. So under here again I've got tubs, so in that top tub I've got that full of plastic pocket sleeves. I get a lot of them with um, folders of collectibles and that that I pick up from the shop and I take like the cards and that out and I keep the little sleeved pockets to store ephemera in or to use in my journals. Underneath I have wedding dress material. Now there's a expandable file folder there, it's a nice big one so it fits in newspaper sized um, pieces so that's great for oversized magazines and newspaper pages. I've got this tub here which has some random like lino and bits of paper and that that are a bit big to fit elsewhere. Um, and I think there's another plastic tub hiding in there that has uh, greeting cards and that in boxes like box sets. I have this set of drawers here and this has papers and that for mixed media so I've got some newspaper, I've got grease proof paper, um, just paper I'll use on the gel plate, more grease proof, uh, brown paper, uh, just white pieces of paper I can use and business cards that I can use on the gel plate. So that is what's under that desk. Now the drawers and cupboards, I forgot to show you the drawer and cupboard on the other desk, so I'll show you that in a minute. But in the top of this one, I have Punchinella, some of this, is that painter's tape stuff that we like to use in our mixed medias? I've got some brayers, I've got foam brushes, just stuff that I'd use in mixed media, sponges. In the cupboard, I've got my big A4 gel plate. I've got some brown paper. And in the bottom, I've got a couple of tubs that I put stuff for mark making, something that I want to get into a fair bit in the future. So that's what's in that one. So I'm going to move you over there to show you what is in that drawer and cupboard, which I forgot about. So in the drawer, I have some cottons and my scissors and that, and I have a skewer for making my ruffles. And in the cupboard, the one problem with these mom desks is they're very deep and it's almost impossible to reach to the back to grab things out. 
But what they're really good for storing is your yeah, big long rolls of stuff. So I can fit like my rolls of wallpaper in there and contact. So that's what I've done here, stalled all of my wallpapers. Well, not all of them. There's one that wouldn't fit <laughs> that was a bit too long. So that's what's in there. And I've shown you the cupboards, all of that along there. And now we're up to here. I have this pin board. Now on there you'll see I have an Ultra Jigsaw piece that I made and a little project there that I made for Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft. The beautiful card there that the lovely Auntie Vera sent me. And also a calendar that the Auntie Vera, that Auntie Vera sent me as well, which I love. Next to that is these altered CDs which I made for a project and I love those as well so I've hung them up. And hanging off of there is this Halloween boho bead, which the lovely Amanda gave me. I think it was on a journal that she gave me. But I love this for inspiration, so I've hung it up there. I love having bits and pieces of all my friends in this room. So, which brings me to show you before I forget, hanging up on here is this altered paintbrush, which was a gift from the lovely Wendy at Creating with Wendy as well. I also forgot to show you this, which is something I made for Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft, which sits there and has some of my vintage needles and that in. Okay, so I have a bookcase here. It's a Billy bookcase. Most of my bookcases are Billy bookcases from Ikea. I find them good value and sturdy to put all my books in. So on the top of that, I have this great container and that is full of mainly journaling cards. I can grab from. I have this, it's one of your toilet paper roll tag holding things and I used a digital kit from Deb at String and Scissors to make that. Then I have this set of three drawers which doesn't have anything in it yet. I have this little calendar that was made by Pam at Just Add Lace. I have these little <laughs> chickens. I mentioned on a video once how much I loved them when I was a kid and all the kids used to get them and I just used to love them and the lovely Carol had some at home so she sent them to me which I love so they sit up there. I found this in an op shop one day and I think it's a letter sorter and it had heaps of dividers in it so I've taken most of the dividers out but it's great for putting envelopes and I keep the pockets when I go out for lunch from the restaurant in there as well to alter. Beautiful card from Pam and a bobblehead thing that I was gifted. Oh, and this is a little project I made for Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft as well. Okay, so we'll call you down one. Oh, this I was gifted by my sister-in-law. Um, you put money in it and then smash it when you want the money. Um, I'm too scared to put money in it because I'd smash it pretty quick. But I'm thinking I do want one of them big bites one day. So I'm thinking maybe I should start chucking my gold coins in there and then smash it to get me big bite one day. So, um, so on this top shelf I have different little books that have... Um, papers in with little pictures and that that will be great for use in journals so little recipe journals and um, ones with cupcakes in them and just different things and ones with nice covers that I want to use that sort of thing the next one down I have a whole lot of art diaries watercolor paper canvas papers I think I have a few albums that are like vintage business card holders, that sort of thing. I also have some inspirational books on scrapbooking and that sort of thing that I want to look at sometime and try out a few things. I have similar down the bottom, some scrapbooking books, magazines, uh, ledgers, um, things that I want to use the paper out of, that sort of thing. Now, in between the bookcase and my drawers, I have big ones that won't fit um so big folders that i can store big pieces of paper in and that sort of thing and big art diaries um, my daughter left a lot of that sort of stuff here and i picked up a few around the second hand stores that i thought might be handy now down the side of that 
I have a tray which I use, you probably see that on my videos, to sort buttons and jewellery and that sort of thing. I have a plate there as well which I use for similar. And I have a Chinese brush painting set that I want to try out sometime. And I'll just roll you around. I'm sitting on my chair having a nice rest and rolling around everywhere. Hanging on my door handle is a beautiful rustic love heart that was made by the lovely Creating with Wendy. As I said, I just absolutely love having bits and pieces of everyone in here because then I think of those people when I'm walking around looking at these things. Don't get creeped out, guys. <laughs> now, I have this messy area here. Now, I love having it there because when I have my door open, you can't see it. So these are all bits that are sort of a bit too messy and long and junky to put elsewhere. So I have some window tint stuff there that I want to try for something in the future. I have some long bits of corrugated cardboard, wrapping paper, um, sandpaper, a bit of wallpaper that wouldn't fit in my cupboard, some big stencils, some bits of wood, <laughs> all sorts of stuff there. And then I have this. Uh, it's one of your 10 drawer units that you get from I think we get them from Spotlight and and I don't know if we get them from Kmart but you can get them from a few places I've managed to pick up a few from Marketplace which has been great uh, yeah but I got that and then on top it just goes up and that is my that is my tower of wood stamps <laughs> I'm a bit ashamed of that but that's what it is so we'll have a look at that <laughs> so on the top I have these which are velcro stamps which is really weird and I just have some random stamps there which I'll find a better spot for I have some alphas on top there they fit nicely in there so they can stay there now I got these plastic drawers once in a marketplace hall and they had wood stamps in which I have sorted out so top there I have ocean stamps I have butterflies uh, florals 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 and florals uh, these are a few excess stamps that I'm going to do something with. That's Australian and Chinese, or Oriental, I should say. Uh, they're like words and sentiments. Um, they are kids and bits and pieces. They're like vintage and different bits and pieces. <laughs> Travel. Animals. Hearts. Oh, fairies and that sort of fantasy stuff. Um, or florals, like roses and botanicals. I was going to take them off the box, but I'm still arguing in my head whether I will or not. So, and I've got more... Um, that I found and I don't know where I'm going to put but I'm still in the process of sorting out my stamps okay so we're on to the first calyx unit so if I scoot back you'll see I've got these two trolleys that sit in front of the calyx unit and then I've got the calyx unit and then I've got all this stuff that sits on top of it so we'll look at that first so on top I've got this canvas that I want to paint sometime. I've got one of these stupid things. I saw everyone with these so I thought I'd grab one because they look cool and I hate the thing. So you twist the top and it all opens up and you've got all these compartments. And I thought it'd be good to put out on the coffee table when I want to make clusters and that, which I still might sometimes. So it's just full of some stuff to make clusters with. Uh, I've got these scrapbook paper containers. So they're 12 by 12s. Uh, one of them has paper doilies, the other one has my dried flowers, but it's not good for storing dried flowers, so I have to change that out a bit. Use something else that has sticky notes in it. Now down the side I have some potpourri. Um, I keep the boxes that book sets come in because they're handy for storing papers, and that has some vintage paper in it and some bulldog clips. Uh, these have some just... A cardboard from books and that sort of thing 
Uh, now this is a bookcase that's been turned on its side and put on top of the Calyx unit and this is where I store its foam stamps in that container. Again I've grabbed a whole lot of fridge bins from probably Kmart. Uh, these are like Tim Holtz and Darkroom door stamps. And yes, there's another frilly lacy bit from Pam <laughs> and I absolutely love it. So that's up there for inspiration. And I love the colours. And there are my stamp pets from Stamping Up Stamps. And then we get into the Calyx unit. And I have my acrylic stamps. Again, they're in the fridge bins, and this is what I mean by it's so handy having them in these little bins. I haven't sorted them properly yet, but I'm still laminating them and getting them organised, and then I will sort them. But it'll be so handy just to grab a, a tub and put it onto the desk behind me to find what I want. Then we move over, and I've got some more stamping up stamps. I know they're block stamps, but I thought I'd just leave them in the container so that they're in their set and I know what I've got to then. There's some of the Avery L pockets that I'm using to store my stamps in. Oh, wow, there's an empty container. There's some of the bigger sets of stamps. And then some of the little sets of stamps and stuff there. Now, I'm just going to move my wheelie things away so we can look at the rest of the unit. So down here I have this container that's just got some storage pockets in it. So I'll move that out of the way. So I still have to organise this, but it's got folders and containers that have ATCs, ephemera, um, information on tools that I use, mixed media, stuff that I've done, paper strips and borders. Yeah, it all means sorting that stuff. Over here is now where I keep my postcards, library cards. Uh, that white folder has more acrylic stamps in and then I've got my vellums in some folders there as well. Then over here I have some cards and I've sorted them into themes. Next to that is another container that has all the bits that I get, like tags and that from packaging that I want to cover and reuse. So in this one I have more cards in that clear container. And they're botanical butterflies and birds. Next to them I have some calendars and some chipboard. And I'll keep going down here I think. That big container has vintage book pages. Go across. Those tubs have um, flashcards and uh, different sort of ga games with cards and that sort of thing that I can alter or slip into journals. There we have stationery. So your little beautiful pads that have pictures and that on them. Next to that we've got um, little stationary pads and invoices, that sort of thing that I can use to put into tuck spots. Go across and we have playing cards and then just a whole lot of storage here. These are dine stamp storage folders that I'm not using at the moment for that but they'll be great for ephemera as well and just some of your plastic pockets which I'll use for something. Down the bottom we have playing and tarot cards and cards and puzzles, that sort of thing. Okay, so now I'm sitting at my work desk and I thought I would pull over one of these um, draw sets. Now these are the sets that sit in front of that Calyx unit we were just looking at. So I can easily pull these over while I'm working and grab bits that I need out of them. So on the top I've got this shoe box and it has some of these little folders in there. And these are just bits of ephemera. So I've got bookmarks. They're the ones that have fallen out of all the books. I've got some um, fussy cuts. Just bits of interest that I've cut out of books. Magazine words. I have them all over the shop. Postcard pictures for making faux postcards and stamp catalogue pictures. And then in the drawers I have, this says tags, so tag bases. I have some of your tea bag tags, little shop tags. There's some little tags that I've made already, just random tags, little tiny tags at the back. 
this is well i have a whole lot of the start bits to pianola rolls here these are the more boring pieces but i'll still use them so i have cut all of these off of the start of the pianola rolls to use the paper and i've just kept those i have book spines i have some book fronts that i want to keep and use and i have a lot of um like book spine paper and the end pieces and that i've been collecting this stuff for years so um pianola roll bits and pieces so that all lives in there now this is a lot of stamp die cuts that i've kept for making faux stamps and spool die cuts just bases ready to go um, I've got banners that have been cut already, that sort of thing. Um, and in here are all my bits and pieces for my wax seals. It's quite heavy, so I thought they could go in the bottom drawer here. So it's quite easy for me to wheel that back and forth when I want to use it. So I'll just grab the other one. Okay, so this is like my art cart. <laughs> that rhymes. So on the top I have some, they're like pearl paints, um, I have some acrylics, I have metallic acrylics, normal acrylics, I have my watercolours, I have my oxide sprays and other sprays, more sprays that I just recently got, my gesso, some glue, a paint palette, I've got paint brushes, I've got just some random pens and textures for journaling more of that sort of stuff here a brayer I have spray acrylics pearl paints i've got my little atc gel plate i've got alcohol inks uh, there alcohol ink pads I've got gelatos uh, pearl dots perfect what are they called them things Perfect pearls, something like that. <laughs> My Inca golds, that sort of thing. Then down the bottom, I have some a big white PVA glue. You can see at the back there, I've got gel pens. Uh, these are texture tools, which I might put in with my mark making stuff. Uh, water and distress markers, and then this is full of my alcohol markers. They fit really nice in there. I had all of my markers standing up in containers on the top, but then I realised you meant to keep them horizontally, so I've now got them in here, which is really cool. So that is so handy, and I love having it all stored like that. And again, very easy for me to pull over when I need it. Okay, so now we're into my fabric mess, which I did not clean up for you. So I've got this two-door inbuilt cupboard, and on the doors I have attached these um, whiteboards and pin board. They're not in the best condition because they've been used by me and the kids, but it's still really handy for me to put notes and um, just bits and pieces on. So we will get in there. Okay, so as I said, I haven't cleaned it for you. So we'll look up the top first. And up there I have spare embroidery threads, across stitch kits, and to the right there is felt. And there's space, oh my goodness. Uh, I've got some more mesh, which should go with my other meshes. I have that jelly roll that is sitting up there precariously. Now, I have these shoebox things. I did buy a few off of Marketplace and then someone was giving away a whole heap of Marketplace, so I grabbed them. So that's the way I store them now. And so you can see I've got quilt squares in a couple of them, but mainly they're um, in colours or themes. So there's pink and brown and cream and that. And then I've got travel and gingham kids all these different themes and then i get slack when i get stuff from the op shop and i just shove it on top which is probably a good thing because it gets a bit much just to come put one or two things away so when it sort of gets full i just go through it and have a big clean up it's a big roll of this stuff that i got cheap once so that is how i store my fabric i used to have it all in these tubs but i actually really like the um shoe box thing because it's a bit smaller easier to drag over to my desk especially when i'm filming but i do still need a few tubs for the bigger pieces 
down the bottom is right down the bottom there are some wallpaper samples which I think the lovely Susanna Easdale from Vintage Blue and Studio gave me. You can see a tartan um, pencil case. I think I grabbed a whole heap of them from the bookshop one day that were in the bin. I may try and make a cover out of them one day. In the bag next to them I think is uh, quilting pieces that someone started and didn't finish. Now in the middle there is just this massive stack of big pieces of clothes and bedding and just bits and pieces that I want to break down and use. Yes, I <laughs> must get to that one day. And then this is a black work that I did one day, which I really like. Okay, so I'll just open the other side and start up the top. Now up there I have my Halloween and Easter ephemera because I don't use it very often and my Christmas um, fabrics and ribbons, that sort of thing. And then I think it's a weaving loom on the right there. And then I've utilised the hanging space and put my, some of my big sheets and retro pieces hanging there that I need to break down too. That would probably save me some room. Then I have more of my shoe boxes and they have sort of metallics and silky sort of materials and that sort of sort of specialty material. And then down further I have things like hessian and calico, that sort of thing. Then upholstery fabrics. Yeah, what's down the bottom there? Oh covers. And oriental and boho in those tubs down the bottom. So that is my fabric disaster. Okay, now we are up to these DVD holders that I have here, which are next to my fabric cupboard. So we'll start with the top again. So up there I have a box for clusters, uh, one for sewn paper and fabric embellishments, whatever that means have a bag there that has some different brown papers in. I have a, it's like a CD album, which I use to store die cuts in. And I have this, I think it's a stamping up tower thing, and those little containers used to hold stuff. At the moment I've got some foils in some of them, but the rest are empty, but I think it might be handy one day, so I keep it another one of the boxes that book set came out of that's storing some papers. I have all of these albums that I use for things and need to do things in so they're just there. These are die cuts stored in photo albums and there's a tub full of some that I need to organize. The stamp albums with stamps that I use and some of these, they're little expanding file folders that I want to use to store ephemera in. I think I do have ephemera in those actually. And the little bucket has the eraser and pens for my whiteboard. I have a stamping up container here that has nothing in it and then I've got a few of these wooden crates that are great just for holding some ephemera. Alright, sit back down. It's another crate that just has some cut like cutouts, book cutouts and bits and pieces. Um, and some got all of this stuff from the Creative Memories haul that I recently got. Just some little baskets. These are backings that I want to use. I want to recycle them, all little cardboard packaging, that sort of thing, and junk mail. Some of it I've already used, but I need to do more with. I have some paper flowers and paper clips. Now here we have invoice books and that sort of thing. I want to use them to put into pockets and that. Have a little container of bling and have this beautiful little journal from Kay. Um, and she's paper craft with Kay. Next to that I have, I think it's straw paper or elephant poo paper <laughs> in these books. So I put it there to remind me that I've got it because I want to use it more. Um, that container again has 
um, pamphlets and packaging that I want to repurpose. Now down here we've got some calligraphy sets and more invoice books and that sort of thing. Um, and then here we have the exercise books. I've got a pile of those things, but they're great size pages and you can take them out already together to put into your journals, which is handy. So I thought I'd leave them there. And then we've got embellishments that I haven't really sorted. They're just random ones that didn't really go into my other category as much. They're photo corners. They could go somewhere else. They're just sitting there all by themselves. And then down the bottom, we've got these two sets of drawers, which are embellishments. Now on the top here, I've got some projector film that the lovely Beck gave me recently. Uh, this is a border maker set. Yes. <laughs> this says stars, but it seems to have hearts as well. So it's hearts and stars. Sequins. Bugs. Uh, themed sequins. Alphas. Sticky bling. Stuff. More stuff. Epoxy embellishments, frames. Now I think we will get on to my next um, Calyx unit, which is a 4x4, four four, and this sits directly behind me when I'm crafting. So all this wall, it's very easy for me just to roll around on my chair or turn around and grab stuff as I need it. So that's what it looks like, a big mess. So again, we'll start at the top. So up there I have all of these cardboard magazine holders from Ikea. I've got some of them in the secondhand stores, which has been handy. Now they hold a whole lot of sort of A4 size papers and scraps. So there's specialty papers, uh, decorative A4 papers, scrapbook scraps, stationery. They're all sort of papers that I want to use as pages and that in journals but I don't want to put away with my other um, scrapbook papers. I sort of want to get using them. So they just go up there so I might remember to grab them. And those magazine holders are so light and because of the little circles, it's easy to grab them and lift them down from there. So I have an upturned bookcase on top of this Calyx unit as well. And on top of here, I have this whole section is pretty well all of your fly pages or coloured start pages out of books so yeah I have them organised in colour <laughs> so easy to grab from uh, over here we have these are basically all your plain paper they're not all the ones I've got I've got piles of these but I've yeah had to put some in the other room and um, so I'll restock this when it gets low but they're the pages the blank pages that I take out of the books that I harvest. Um, I love using these for backing tags and that sort of thing. So then I've got my tin coffee dyed papers there, uh, my colour dyed papers here. These are just little bits of scrap paper lined and blank and that. Uh, these are just random papers again that I can use to make journal pages. Uh, these are just like different papers <laughs> scrap bits they're all sort of just scrap bits uh this i like to keep empty and it just sits there it's uh, like a toolbox holder i can stick my glues and tools in there if i want to go out in the lounge and it's easy to carry them around so behind that i have two of these paper holders that are stacked on top of each other I did have my tea dyed papers and that in there, but I actually find that they fit better in the magazine holders. So I've kept this for things like folders, uh, the thicker uh, cardboard bits and bigger bits and that, and suspension files and that, scrappy bits that I can use. Okay, so we'll go down to the Calyx unit now. So in here I have a whole lot of the creative memories haul that I got. These are these little packets and they're full of little um, rectangle papers and journaling spots. I thought I would keep them here because they'll be heaps handy to make little journaling spots in journals that I make. And I want to remember that I've got them and use them. Behind there I've got my decorative cutting scissors 
and index cards. I have some of my punch boards there. A few of them I've got in hauls. They're not ones that I'd actually buy. But I've got them so I'll try them and then decide if I want them or not. I think I've got a flower one and a banner one. Um, yeah, I don't know what else I've got there. I've got this big punch that I want to start using more. Uh, below that I have these drawers which have tapes in at the moment. Masking tapes and these tapes. I've got my massive scoreboard and I've got my cutters. Yeah. Lots of cutters. So then we go up again to this one. This is a lot of stuff for glue booking and to make some glue books out of when I get around to it. So I've got personal information I want to put into some journals and books. Um, Evergreen, that's a little magazine. I got a whole heap of them when I started at the bookstore and I harvested them and they're really cool. So I'll probably use a lot of that stuff in my personal journals sometime. And just some of my bits and pieces, pens and pencils and stuff. And then here I have it's a scrap bin. So scrappy papers and card stocks and bits and pieces that I want to use up. I have some stamps that I think are really cool and I've put here because I think I'll want to use them regularly. Up here I've got alpha stickers and words. In here I have like words and that, like I've got Tim Holtz small talk and that sort of thing. Try and use all this stuff up a bit more. I have a couple of boxes that are empty here that I can use to store stuff in. Magazine words, I've got some closures here, just a good place to keep them. Um, basically if I find a long bit of rope or something and it doesn't really fit in with my other trims or anything but I think I might like to use it as a closure, it goes in there. These are my binding tools. Down here I have these drawers. This one has build your own stamps. I love using them and I decided to store them close. I use these a lot for the numbers for faux stamps. But you can of course um, build words and all that sort of stuff with them. Phrases. Uh, this is excess washi. And that sort of thing, other tapes. I've got to trim scraps. I've got to build this up more. I have a whole lot of trims. I keep the excess trims, balls of trim and that in the other room. But I want to put them onto spools and store them in here. So it's easy for me to turn around and grab them and use them more. I've got paper strips in these. Long paper strips. I've got plain and I've got coloured. What I do is when I cut them off, I put them in here and then I sort them where they need to go. <laughs> so up here I have uh, folders which I'm working on at the moment um, when I'm going through magazines rather than keeping 10,000 magazines I go through harvest the one or two pages of inspiration or techniques that I want to try out keep them in these folders I've got my Tim Holtz book that I got recently that I want to try some of the techniques out and they're up there to give me something to do Got my eyelets, my brads, and my cross stitch thread because I like to use if I'm if I want a specific colour to bind my journal, then there's a whole lot of different colours there to use. Down here I have my washi tapes, and what I love about these drawers is I can just take the whole drawer out and take it over to my desk. So I've just got them sorted into things and type sort of. Uh, I have sticky bling in this sticker holder. And then I've got these two folders that I made with, um, they were a project for Lavender Blue. Um, so, and they're my ephemera holders. And then I've got some new stamps here that I want to play with sometime soon. So I must do that soon. Got them there to remind me. Okay, I'm sitting down so I can show you the rest. So we'll do the drawers. So in this drawer I have some like pockets. I've got these ones from Craft Spire. Um, like seed packet things and divider cards. Just random interesting bits. In here I've got some little tags. I should go in with my tags, shouldn't I? But yeah, just lots of interesting stuff. 
In here I have paint chips. I've got some paint chip books here that I got from a recycle centre. I've got some playing cards that are rubbish ones that I won't use. Like I don't like them so I'm quite happy just to alter the whole lot of them. So they're in there to use. Down here is this marble cutting board that I was using for my to do my wax seals on. I have a bag of oversized paper um, decorative pages and that that I want to use sometime. And then I have this, it's sort of like a scrappy tub of papers. Um, so I've got coloured cardstock scraps, uh, white cardstock, painted papers. I've got some wrapping papers. Just all sorts of different scraps, wallpaper scraps. Um, so I can easily just pull that out next to me while I'm crafting if I want to grab some different sorts of paper. Moving along. <laughs> Got that. Okay, so this drawer has uh, stuff for personal journaling and planners and that sort of stuff, which I don't do much of, but I'd like to in the future. So it's got some photos and... Um, just planner stickers and that and this came in a vintage haul I got one day and I thought what am I going to do with that so I just chucked it in my personal use drawer I also have washi scraps I keep the washi that gets sent to me on packaging and that sort of thing and to use in personal journals uh, down here I've got layering fabrics seam binding that Valida gave me yeah just lots of layering fabrics uh, this big beautiful Victorian chest uh, has a few vintage book pages but I've got to sort that out more my book pages is something that I need to sort out a lot more and here is uh, my office stamps and that sort of thing uh, fasteners like your big fastener things oh, some cutters for my Kaiser craft cutter and that Oh, this is just a drawer full of... Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. There's more punches. I didn't know they were there. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something about that. Uh, border punch kit things. And these book page slips. <laughs> oh, and below there is... There are my stencils. So I have books, like stencils that are in books and stuff. Uh, I have cardboard stencils, um, plastic, big thick plastic stencils. I have a couple of scrapbooks that I store stencils in. And then I have my sticker stadium, which I have a lot of stencils in as well. Yeah. Up here is glues, sticky dots, different adhesive things. My fancy stapler which I still need to try out on camera sometime because I did have a request to show someone how to use it and I still haven't done it yet that sort of thing in here is heat tool and embossing powders this is there is a wood cutting board there I do my embossing on that I have a thing for my rub-ons yeah, that's my rub-ons there these are embellishments. So I sort them into these and into this top. Again, it's very easy when I'm sitting here just to pull them out when I need them. So now I'll show you my work desk. This is scary. Okay, so I'm sitting in my chair and this is my view on my work desk. So as you can see, I have the laptop there so I can watch YouTube and stuff. It's missing the W key, so I can't type on it very easily, so I have a spare keyboard. It's a lot easier to type on, and I can move it out of the way when I want to. I have it on the rack just so it's a better height for me to watch, and also I can use utilise the space underneath. Now I'll show you my crude filming setup, which is this rack that you get from um, Bunnings or wherever. Um, Kmart, I usually get them from Kmart online or whatever, they're the same wire racks as I'm going to show you afterwards but you can custom them how you like so I've got one of those there and I have my ring light on top and then I put my iPad on it as well and I film underneath it 
So I have my ring light and then I have this LED light there and they both plug into my laptop and that's how I light the area. But you still see shadows from my light and the rack, unfortunately. So that is my crude setup. So I'm just going to stop for a minute and I'm going to move this rack off so I can show you the desk setup. Okay, so if you watched how I organised my tools in that few weeks back, you would have seen this tool holder when I was sorting it out. So I keep my corner round here because I use that one a lot. And then I have my tools here to the right of me. And I have a cutter and my rulers, scissors, just the tools that I use regularly there. I have uh, my tissues because I use them a lot to wipe glue and my pens and that there. So I'm just going to move them out of the way. And we'll have a look at this mess that I have here. So I have these tubs just to store random ephemera. I have some stamped ephemera there. And here I've got some library labels. They're just stamps and that that I pull out of the books. I've got some material tab pieces. Uh, dictionary meanings that I made into little labels. They're just some tabs got some purple labels and I've got Tracy Fox labels here. Now I've got different sorts of tabs here. I've got some that Valida gave me, some airmail stickers, stamp pictures, faux stamps, just that sort of thing along there. Um, just more stamped ephemera, wildtail tabs that Jeanette and Carolyn gave me and some more labels. And then in here I have an assortment of clips book plates, book corners, bulb pins and sort of other pins. I won't show you every drawer because they're sort of similar stuff. Um, paper clips, more paper clip type things, um, press stud things, buttons, uh, more clips, rubber bands, and push pins so it's all that sort of stuff that I can grab while I'm working if I need to um yeah I have lino here so I don't make a mess of my desk I need to replace it because it's getting a bit messy I have this set up here you can buy these I think still at Kmart and put them together but I love it I can keep my cutter in there I've got a cutting mat I've got these mats that I use to glue on. I've got a scoreboard. I have greaseproof paper and other papers for gluing on. That is just for my light to switch it on. I've got a glass mat. I have an address book that I don't use. Note paper, just a little jigsaw piece that I made. Uh, I've got my glues lying down because they're at the end of their life. Uh, this is where I keep my daubers and I put them down and put my little inks on there so that I don't mess up my table. And I've got my wet wipes. And then that's how I store my glue, which I also showed in my organisation video. And I can pull this drawer out to grab all of those bits and pieces. Now, under this desk, which is getting quite dark, is uh, the white tub thing just there has all my Ziploc bags. I use them so much and I reuse them. So I'm forever grabbing them and putting them back in there. So I've got them sorted into size. And then there's a drawer down the bottom and that just has vintage book blocks. So I can grab pages from them. And then I've got my cutting mats stored there. Now there's a Hungry Jack's bag just there. That is for my recycling all my little bits of cut paper and that they go into there. And then when it's full, I tie it up and chuck it in my recycle bin. And then I've got my rubbish bin. And then next to me, we have this drawer. And that has some tools in it. So I've got my paint roller. I just use that to press stuff down when I glue it. This cutter, which I never use. Some staplers. Spare blade for rotary cutter, uh, um, staples, a tiny attacher, crimper thing, corner rounders, 
uh, my washi cutter thing. <laughs> um, I've got some gloves back there, charging cord, and blades for a cutter. And then in this cupboard I have glues, stays on cleaner, my die, my fuse tool, more book blocks, could do something about that, and uh, some cardboard that I use to punch holes on. Okay, what next? I think I'll move over. Now I have this unit. Was it an Alex unit, I think? Alex drawers? Yeah. And I've shown this in a recent organisation video too. But what I love about it is it's on wheels. So I can pull that. It's quite heavy around towards me when I'm working so that I've got extra desk space and I can access the drawers while I'm working really easy. And they have in them my inks. So my Distress inks and oxides and some stamp blocks and that. Extra inks. Uh, extra tools. Punches. More punches. And art supplies. Just mainly pencils and stuff. So next to that, I have another lot of your 10 drawers on wheels as well, which I can also pull towards me when I'm working. And on the top of that, I have this basket, which at the moment has some random stuff that I want to remember to use. And I also have my tea bags because I don't live in a particular spot. My tea bags, I keep getting moved around. I have these three boxes which I've scored recently from Marketplace. Oh no, they were op shop. So I've got plain fabric scraps, so it's like layering fabrics, just little pieces. Very easy to bring this box to my desk to use them. Um, trim scraps, so it's like the trims that I showed you before. Just more of them. Uh, wallpaper scraps, so little bits and pieces. And then we've got our drawers. Turn it around the right way. So I'm still working on this setup, but it's basically just different bits of ephemera and a lot of it is my vintage stuff, or some of it. So I've got some photo corners and some matchbox tops. These are just random bits and pieces that I find. Uh, clothing labels and barcodes. And just some vintage ephemera and some of my stickers and that that I've bought. Guest checks and ephemera packs. So this is all like vintage ephemera here and book plates. Uh, Monopoly stuff, vintage ephemera. Stamped ephemera. Uh, just ephemera. <laughs> uh, this is all botanical ephemera that I've been making. Uh, Tim Holtz and tickets. These all sit in front of my windows but they're pretty easy to move so I will start with the drawers on top. So I've got a beautiful birthday card from Pam. Now I'll start over here I've got these drawers. These are recent acquisitions and I think the bulk of these are empty so I've got to figure out what to do with them. In the bottom I've got a whole lot of stuff that I got from a wedding one day. Now I'll go over to these drawers. Um, some wallpaper stuff and some plastic cards for scraping paint and that. Must sort these out more. Uh, these are fabric strips which I need to put somewhere else. A recipe and other bits and pieces which I want to use. Googly eyes. That's glitter and stuff. And there's some cinch coils and other bits, rings. Now I have these which are all stacked up and they're just different material bits and that's pretty random in there. So I've got appliques, don't know, um, bows, fabric ruffles and yo-yos and fabric flowers it would be. I won't open them because it's too hard to do with one hand. 
And then I've got three sets of these plastic drawers, which I showed a bit of in an organisational video. But these store my fabric scraps. And fabric scraps. Uh, lace pieces. So these are lace pieces that I've got off of clothing and that sort of thing. And curtains. That's, yeah, all from the op shop. Up here we have excess ribbons, more lace scraps, lace pieces, and curtain lace, then I've got my ribbon scraps, more ribbon scraps. Uh, this is napkin backings and your wet wipes when they've dried with beautiful colours on them. And an empty drawer, oh my goodness. Okay, so, and then here I have an empty basket. Now down the bottom there in that box are sticky labels. Then the bottom plastic tub has wallpaper borders and freezers. The next one up is full of vintage sewing patterns. The one up from that has sewing patterns, but the one's out of magazines. And then the one up is overflow of vintage sewing patterns. Okay, I think I'm getting somewhere. We are up to the two wire racks that I have. Thank goodness. It's like running a marathon, I tell you. So I have these two hanging devices. <laughs> so this is a tool hanger, I think. I've had these for years and years just sitting around my place. So it's good to have a use for them now. So with this one, I have my pinking shears, um, some big thick wire cutters, uh, just some, I think these are left-handed scissors, which I can't use, and a hand drill. I've got drill, drill bits down here, some more pliers, and a couple of weird hole punches, which I probably want to remember that I've got, so that's why they're there. So I'm just going to, so that just hangs up here. So I'll just remove that. And then I have this, it's like a jewellery hanger, I think. So that's double-sided. So it's pockets on both sides, which is really handy. And that just hangs up like that. So I can move that along, which I will to make it a bit easier for myself. Move it along wherever I like. So in that I've got my um, raffle tickets. Well, I've got my used raffle tickets, I should say. I've got my tea, tea pockets, tea bag pockets. I've got a whole lot of clothing tags from the op shops, uh, like the sale tags, because I want to repurpose them. And I thought um, I'll remember easier that I have them. And I, it's so easy just to grab them and use them while they're sorted like this. Uh, down the bottom, I've got the top of some pages with the titles. And I think they're music notes that I've punched. So just some random stuff. So I'll just move that off as well. Okay, so where to start? I think we'll start over here. So up the top in the tub we have bias binding, uh, ribbon spools and gathered lace. Now I showed all of those tubs in a recent organisation video as well. Got a tub there that has lunch bags and gift bags and just generally bags that I'll use in my journals. Got three tubs there that have different ephemera, so it's steampunk, travel and sewing. Now if I go down, we have uh, ephemera that's already made, uh, stuff that I've made. So in there and some in there that I'm sorting. This has some stuff I've been gifted and random stuff I haven't put away yet, including bags that I've been too lazy to put up in there. This, I think, is greeting cards and things like that that I haven't sorted properly yet. I think they'll end up somewhere else, but yeah, they're just there at the moment. This is all other people's ephemera. So I've been gifted a lot of ephemera by other people. So these are envelopes and tags from other people. And I think this is a box of the lovely Jeanette Crafty Dorks ephemera that she's given me. Been very lucky. 
Now these are three tubs which I did show in my recent lace and trim organisation video. So there's cord and twine and it's basically different types of trim and cord and twine. This I sorted out last night because it was a mess. Uh, decorative envelopes and plain, there are some plain ones but there's a lot of my decorative envelopes that I've picked up from secondhand shops. Now these are all my used envelopes so there's a couple of big ones on top and then it's all like business envelopes, stacks of them. Go down and we have birds and botany. So that's just a whole lot of book ephemera that I've just got. I've got to sort all that sort of stuff out because I have so much of it. Um, now in between that is where I have the PowerPoint that I plug my four board adapter into. I also might plug my heater in there so I keep it pretty clear to make it easy for me to plug and unplug and switch on and off. So here I have a big tub of my napkins. And then overflow of napkins. And then down the bottom here I have this which I cleaned up this week too. I'm so proud of myself. These are all my beads. Now I did give a fair bit back to my daughter because she left a whole lot here when she moved. Which was good because it enabled me to get this nice and clean. Also I had a couple of tubs, uh, open tubs of all this stuff that I'd got and not sorted or put away. So I got into that and got it done. So the sewing box... Over there, the blue one, um, it says regular beads. So that would be stuff that I've pulled apart, the bigger beads from secondhand stuff or that I've bought and put in there. And on top is a bead sorter so that they don't roll everywhere. Uh, a top, on top of that orange container are just beautiful bits that I've colour-coded, jewellery pieces that have been colour-coded. There'd be bracelets, earrings, all that sort of stuff. The orange tub has seed and smaller beads. This has seed and smaller beads as well. Then I have this container which is themed pieces, so butterflies. It also has things like watches and earrings and that sort of thing. Uh, love hearts, all that sort of stuff. And then I've got a container like this, but bigger, that's behind. And that is colour-coded um, necklaces and that that haven't been taken apart yet. So, yeah, got a lot. <laughs> okay, so, oh, now underneath there, uh, right at the end there, you see the blue container. That's stones. Uh, the one next to it is shells. And then the one just here is maps. So they're your, like, pamphlets that you get when you're touring around the place that have maps on them. Oh, you get them from the bookstore a lot, so. So on the top of this one, we have die-cut scraps, uh, dust covers from the books, tissue paper, and ideas and correspondence. I was meant to have an ideas book and a correspondence book right from the start, and I still haven't done it yet, but I still want to. Down here I have lace scraps, so little bits, little tiny pieces. Long lace scraps, so bits that will fit on the edge of pages. And my cigarette cards. I did have them in a plastic container when I did my organisation a couple of weeks back, but I ended up using that plastic container for my alcohol markers instead. So that's where my cigarette cards are now. We'll go down again and I've got postage stamps. These are postage stamps from the lovely Valita and I've got a whole heap of my own that I need to sort into there. On top of that are napkin scraps, so just tiny little pieces that I might want to use in projects so they're easy for me to grab. To the side, um, my creative memories haul. I've got all these packages and all these, I've got lots and lots of border strips. So I'm going to have to do something with them sometimes. So I've put them into these packets and just put them there so that they're in plain sight for me to use. Got some excess packaging here and uh, lots of, I think these are triangle scraps. So I can use them to make some corner tucks. So it's just to remind me to use them. And then just some odd bits that I need to use up. So at the back here I have... Coffee filters, CD envelopes, receipt rolls and patty pans. And then on top of that I have two tubs of chipboard pieces. 
And then down here, I love these containers. I have book fussy cuts, die cut and punch. So they're ones that I've die cut and punched out myself. Uh, and then there's die cut ephemera. So they're probably like more your bought die cut ephemera. Uh, or the, you know, I probably haven't bought them myself, but been gifted or found at the second hand shops. And then there's the paper flowers, like your prima flowers and that sort of thing. Right, sit back down again. Now this is my scrap shelf. So I've got scraps there. So there's scrap vintage book page and more your beige colour tones. On top of that is a box of cardboard scraps. I'm going to do a bigger tub for some cardboard scraps because I've got a lot of them all over the place. I've got coloured scraps there and then I've got scrapbook paper scraps there. So I still need some organisation with them. I'm always organising my scraps. Busy job looking after scraps, hey guys. Okay, down here at the back there. Let me just turn it around. I had it all labelled so I could see and then I went and had to move everything. Um, jewellery chains, closures, earrings and rings. And then like Tim Holtz and Steampunk up the top there. And then the toolbox is full of my pliers and my beading wires and threads. And then here we've got bling. Uh, charms. Um, and then this tub has things like jump rings and spaces and all that sort of stuff. And then these two tubs at the front have, this one has like keys and locks and interesting bits. And this one just has bigger bits of stuff. <laughs> and then the tubs underneath there, one has doily pieces. And the other one has sari silks. I was going to say boho bits, but it's, well, it sort of is because it's sari boho. Boho sari pieces and sari silks. Oh my goodness, I think I did it. So that is it for my room tour. Yay! It's good to finally get it done. That was definitely a workout. So I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, I didn't show you that. I must show you that. See that beautiful little quilt hanging there with the birds on it? That was made for me by the lovely Carol so that when I'm crafting, if I get cold legs, I can wrap that around my legs while I'm crafting. So I just love that. So, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that, guys. You finally get to see the mess I create in. Take care of yourselves. Be good, and I'll see you soon. Bye.